हेलो क्रिस्टल्स वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल यू मस्ट हैव हर्ड अबाउट इंटरवर्टिब्रल डिस्क प्रॉब्लम्स बट डू यू नो व्हाट इट रियली इज व्हिच मैकेनिज्म बिहाइंड इट हाउ डज इट अकर इफ नॉट डोंट वरी आई विल क्लियर दिस कांसेप्ट फॉर यू सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग सो मच टाइम लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड first of all let's clear the basic concept about intervertebral disc vertebra and all so we all know that there are 33 vertebra are present in our back which makes our vertebral column in that seven are cervical vertebra 12 thoracic five lumbar five sacral and four coccygeal sacral and coccygeal vertebras are both fused this all vertebra are not direct in contact with each other but there is a special structure which is present between them this structure is intervertebral disc as the name suggests it is present between two adjacent vertebra the main function of the intervertebral disc is it makes a fibrocartilaginous joint to allow slight movement of the vertebra it transmits the load from one vertebral body to the next vertebral body it act as a shock absorber and holds the vertebra together now on the composition mainly intervertebral disc composed of three parts which are nucleus pulposus annulus fibrosus and vertebral end plates so the nucleus pulposus is a gelatinous mass which is present in the center annulus fibrosus is the fibrous outer ring and the verte vertebral end plates separate the vertebral bodies from above and below so it just like a vada pav or you can also say a burger where bread is like end plate patty is like nucleus pulposus and around the patty is the annulus fibrosus and the other structures we should know about are anterior longitudinal and the posterior longitudinal ligament as the name suggests anterior means the ligament present anterior to the vertebral body and the posterior means ligament present behind the vertebral body as we have learned so far imagine anterior posterior and the annulus fibrosus are the bodyguards of the nucleus pulposus which prevents the bulging of the nucleus pulposus from the center so imagine what happens when degeneration of the annulus fibrosus occurs obviously there are no bodyguards to protect the nucleus so there is a bulging of a disc occurs now let's the detail about mechanism how does this bulging occurs so there are sequence of changes occur in the disc which leads to its prolapse these changes are nucleus degeneration nucleus displacement and the third is stage of fibrosis so in the nucleus degeneration there are degenerative changes occur in the disc before displacement of the nuclear material these changes are mainly softening uh, of the nucleus and its fragmentation and the weakening and disintegration of posterior part of the annulus fibrosus as i said you before if there is no protection or bodyguard present around the nucleus there is a increased chances of the disc bulging occur now the second is nucleus displacement before we start this in this second change there are three terms we which you should know uh, about these terms which are protrusion extrusion and the sequestration i will give you an example to remember this term so when we learn about them you can easily get that imagine you are sitting in your room when you come out of your room it is called the protrusion when you come outside of your home it is called the extrusion and when you go out of your town it is called the sequestration so in this example imagine yourself as a disc so you can easily get the terms i hope you get it and now let's learn the detail about nucleus displacement the nucleus is under positive pressure at all time when the annulus become weak either because a small area of its entire thickness has disintegrated spontaneously or because of injury 
so the nucleus tends to bulge through the defect which is called the disc protrusion remember but in this condition nucleus has still in contact with its parent disc means the disc from its bulge out the tendency is greatly increased it the nucleus is degenerated and the fragmented finally the nucleus comes out of the annulus and lies under the posterior longitudinal ligament though it has still contact with the, its parents disc this is called the disc extrusion now once the disc extruded the disc does not go back the posterior longitudinal ligament is not strong enough to prevent the nucleus from protruding further this is called the sequestered disc the sequestered disc may come to lie behind the posterior longitudinal ligament or may become free fragment in the canal now the third is stage of fibrosis so this is the stage of repair it begins alongside of degeneration the residual nucleus pulposus become fibrosed and the extruded nucleus pulposus become flattened fibrosed and finally undergoes calcification at the same time the newborn formation occurs at the points where the posterior longitudinal ligament has been stripped from the vertebral body and the spur formation occurs i hope you get that all stages now the common site for the exit of the disc prolapse is the posterior lateral occasionally it can be central which is called as the posterior midline and the commonest level for the disc bulging at the lumbar spine is the l4 l5 and in the cervical spine is the c5 and the c6 it is uncommon about the l3 l4 level now let's revise quickly there are mainly three changes occur in the disc bulging which are nucleus degeneration nucleus displacement and the third is stage of fibrosis in the nucleus degeneration there is a disintegration and the fragmentation occur in the nucleus pulposus and the disintegration of the posterior part of the annulus fibrosus occurs in the nucleus displacement there are mainly three uh, processes which are the protrusion extrusion and the sequestration remember the example of the home so you can easily get these terms and the last stage is stage of fibrosis in which in which there is a residual uh, nucleus undergoes fibrosis and the extruded nucleus undergoes the calcification and the spur formation occurs now uh, some other secondary changes are also associated with the disc prolapse as we all know there are no roots which exits from the vertebra but due to disc bulging it can compresses the no roots therefore some neurological symptoms like tingling numbness we felt when the large disc protrusion occurs at the lumbar level it may compresses the cauda equina which is known as the cauda equina syndrome and in some cases due to fibrosis height of the disc reduces so it leads to disarticulation between the facet joints so it leads to degenerative arthritis so that is for today's guys i hope you like my video so please like share and subscribe my channel to get this type of videos regularly thank you stay safe stay healthy and please keep supporting